What is up guys and welcome to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Today we are out here on the lake here at Pine Cove and I can tell you guys it has been an amazing first three weeks of camp. Halfway done, got three more weeks to go and God has been doing some awesome things in the lives of the kids here at camp. I want to thank you guys so much first of all for praying for me um, both at camp and while I was away at my tournament in Oklahoma. And that second part is mostly what I'm going to talk about here in this video. Last week, I headed over to Oklahoma to fish with Josh in the BASS College Wild Card Tournament. So the way this tournament works is that anybody that doesn't qualify for the national championship at the regional can go to the wild card for like a second chance type deal and qualify there. And so me and Josh were feeling pretty good about this tournament and we headed in about a few days early. I only got one day of pre-fishing, but Josh got a few days and because I, I had to stay back at camp. And Josh got a few days pre-fishing in, and the lake was, was fishing really, really well. Everybody was catching a whole bunch of big fish, just like we were at Fort Gibson, and we were hoping that the fishing wasn't going to go, you know, slack during the tournament. And so, uh, I'll, I'll show you guys... What kind of bird is that? I'll show you guys the footage of this tournament and the videos coming out in the next few weeks. But I just kind of wanted to give a rundown right now about how the tournament went, kind of day by day, and how we had to change up our mindset to catch these different fish. So at the end of practice, we had a pretty good pattern, you know, running through our heads of what we knew to do. But Lake Murray is a very small lake, especially for 80 college anglers from the majority of Texas and Louisiana. And so Lake Murray only has a very small portion of it, maybe like 10% that's full of grass, reeds, and, and sh you know, shallow things to flip. And so we knew that our strength of fishing, which is shallow, was, was going to be extremely pressured. And so we knew we had to do something different to catch these fish. So day one starts out. Uh, we're boat number three, and us and boat number five start off in the same canal. And so we start going down the canal, flipping the shallow. It was hydrilla and milfoil, lily pads, all sorts of stuff mixed together, a bunch of reeds. And they catch two keepers right off the bat, a four pounder and a nice, I think it was a two pounder. And it was taking us a while to catch one, and then finally I get a nice four pounder on a frog. And you guys are going to love that footage, it's super exciting. So we get one nice keeper real quick, and then we make our way to the back, and it's just kind of slow. The rest of the day is pretty slow, and we eventually get a small limit, and we're not feeling very good about it. And so we kind of go to one of our baits that we figured out in practice, and that's the classic Cinco. But we took a spin on it last week uh, that made it extra special. And so instead of using, you know, a, a regular watermelon or green pumpkin Cinco or yum dinger, we opted for a bait that the fish probably didn't see as often, which was the it was either the Strike King or the Wave Worm Cinco, their model of the Cinco, that has the spiral colors. I don't have any with me. I ran out of all of them in Oklahoma, but I will put them in the, in the corners up here of, of kind of what the bait looks like. And so it really imitated the bream or the, the sunfish or bluegill that these fish were feeding on down there because if you notice bluegill aren't just one solid color. There are many different colors. And so that was definitely a big key for us. But the biggest thing is the flash. And you probably ask, Tyler, what's the flash? The flash is putting a Colorado blade on the end of the Cinco. And what you do is you take a tiny Colorado blade, I'm talking like, you know, maybe a centimeter across, attach that to a swivel, and attach that swivel to a screw lock that you screw into the tail of a Cinco. And I'll kind of, you know, make that in, in pictures right here for you guys. And the cool thing about that is when you would Texas rig the Cinco and flip it or cast it up there, instead of it just falling in, you know, maybe wiggling a little bit, not, not much action, it would fall with the, the, the blade, you know, spinning as it goes down. And in that slightly off-colored water, that was golden. I mean, the, the fish loved that. Didn't seem to matter what color blade, but we definitely liked the golden blade over the silver blade. So that's kind of how we adjusted day one, is that we went from throwing a regular Cinco to the bladed one, and we ended up with... I think it was 13 pounds, five ounces. So day two rolls around and we start on the same stretch that we did really well on in day two. And it was amazing. The wind was blowing perfectly in there and several guys we saw were flipping up in the reeds, but they weren't catching a whole lot. And some guys are fishing way out from the reeds and they weren't catching a whole lot. But we knew that with the water dropping and the wind pushing in, those fish were going to be somewhere just outside the reeds. And so we would cast with a light line, probably 12 pound, uh, and cast away rods right up there to the reeds and pull it back. And within the first, you know, three poles, 10, 15 feet, that's when we get our bites. And so second day, we kind of did that whole thing and had a really good bag of 15 pounds, 13 ounces. So day three rolls around and we were in the top 20. They cut from the top 80 or whoever, how many boats you have to the top 20. That way the top 13 can make it at the end of the day to the championship. What happened was 
our spot didn't have a whole lot of wind and that's really what we relied on is the wind to push these fish out of the deep grass into the shallow grass and so the guys out deep right away at least we watched a guy from Bethel catch like an eight pounder and several other nice fish were caught out there but we we kind of stuck with the shallow because we were hoping that there was going to be enough fish left over in there you know to fill out our limit and hopefully qualify us for the top 13 but we had a limit of like five fish for six pounds I mean tiny tiny fish and so what we did was run around the whole lake not the whole lake just like the whole top area of the lake with grass and try to scrounge out a limit and we were praying all day this is something that I I didn't talk about on the way in stage but I, I probably should have is that I was asking God you know please lead us into some fish please God we need to make this championship and he kept telling me all day Tyler I need you to trust me and I need you to wait and so he kept telling me all day to wait and finally we get out to this deep grass line and we cross lines with a few other boats and finally uh, we catch a few fish and in about 10 minutes with the cameras off sadly um, I hook into three nice fish about three pounders and they cull out all of our bad fish and that was on this magical bait right here the chatterbait elite with a kicker fish tail slapper kind of like a Kitek uh, swim bait tail as the trailer but the key was the chartreuse tail now a lot of sunfish, especially in Oklahoma and I guess northern states as well, have chartreuse tails. In Texas, our bluegill are kind of, you know, more green pumpkin colored. But we found a few floating on top of the water and we thought, you know what, we should probably dip our, uh, our tails of our chatterbaits into the, the spike it stuff. It was a huge key for us because those bluegill looked just like that chatterbait. And the guys that won that were actually our, our roommates in the hotel throughout the whole week, Johnny Lede and Justin Cooper, they were fishing a separate deep grass line with chatterbaits just like that one because they knew that that's exactly where the bluegill beds were. And so we, we pulled it through at the very end of the day. God helped us out a whole lot. And we will be at the national championship at Green River Lake in Kentucky in the end of July. So we will see you guys there. Now a few more things I want to talk about before I end this video. Sorry if it's been a little long. You guys have always asked, Tyler, why don't you make some t-shirts and some hats and some phone cases for all your subscribers to be able to rep TRF all over the nation? You guys are right, and I've answered your call. Down in the description below, you guys can order Tyler's Real Fishing shirts, sweatshirts, uh, phone cases. I tried to make some hats, but they didn't work. So maybe hats in the future. So anything you guys want to order Tyler's Real Fishing clothing wise is down there below in the description. Please go order. I'd love to see you guys send me Snapchats and Instagram direct messages of you guys wearing my clothes. And one last thing before I head out, I will be at ICAST in uh, the, I think J July 11th through the 15th, which is the International Association of something. It's the biggest, world's biggest tackle show down in Orlando. And I'll be there working for Lucky Tackle Box and connecting with all the pros and all the guys in the industry to kind of work out sponsor deals for 2016 and 2017. And so I will actually be part of the key, one of the keynote speakers there at ICAST. So I'll be speaking about how you can use social media as a business to connect to young fishermen in the industry. And so that's you guys, you're the young fisherman in the industry, and I'm speaking about connecting with you guys, just like I've done throughout my YouTube channel. So what I need you guys to do as part of my, my, uh, my talk is fill out the survey that's listed below. It's, it'll only take a few minutes, you guys can do it on your phone, but I need a few hundred of you guys to do this survey. I have 37,000 subscribers, I'm sure I can get a hundred of you guys to do it. And it'll help me out a whole lot to let you guys know what I'm speaking on and, uh, and let you know the businesses that I'll be speaking to um, let them in on what you know what time you guys watch videos whose videos you watch and what kind of videos you guys watch so make sure you guys go down in the description click on that survey it's super easy and get that done for me that would be awesome so I want to thank you guys again so much for sticking with me I know it's hard because I can't post you know throughout the week here at Pine Cove and I can only post videos and edit on the weekends but I love it here y'all it is so awesome as you can tell it's super peaceful here and I just want to thank you guys so much for the support you give me I will see you guys next time Thank you